tables that are actually like super into, like mm-hmm. interested in your life, and it's you just kind of like I I don't know. I feel like an animal in a zoo sometimes yeah. with that sort of with that sort of interaction. But uh, yeah, no, I mean. Isn't as a performer you kind of an animal in a zoo? Yeah. We're all kind of like, it's all like, check out the way I live my life. Even doing the podcast, we're kind of like, do you want to hear what we talk about? (laughs) You know, so. (laughs) Yeah, it's just a little more patronizing coming from patrons of a restaurant. You know, it's like, like, literally, it's just like, so what's poor life like? You know, like, because if you weren't going to find dining, like, like, because I weren't going to find dining restaurants, so like, I'm serving like the one percent you know and it's just like look at you smiling even though you have nothing you know like that kind of thing and the the restaurant I worked at was like old school family Italian neighborhood restaurant yeah yeah so my my response instead of like what's being poor like was like what does your mother think is your mother okay with this what does your mother think what does your mother think about your career path oh what are you doing to your poor mother man I'm Oh, this is good. I haven't thought about that stuff in a while. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, for sure, you gotta feel like, oh, how did, you, did your mother think that's an okay thing to do? What is she? She funny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I still, I mean, I still will occasionally get that, but it's like if I see someone, like a family friend or something, <clears throat> who I haven't seen in a while, who will ask, and I'll say that, like, oh, that seems like a thing your mother might know. Like, you do? It's like, all right, no, cool. Pump the brakes. It's fine. So interesting how people, like, see the world, like, how they frame things, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because I, I never think about that. I mean, I'm not very super close to my family, but it's like, nobody ever goes, what does your mother think? And I was like, I don't know, I'm talking to her in a while. She's fine, I guess. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> she's um, doing stuff I left, so. I, I think it's part of the thing you mentioned earlier, though, of, like, another piece of that American dream that mm-hmm. we all, like, that comedy isn't in the list of things when you open up the American Dream Manual you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So of course, naturally, those people are like, they're caught off guard. And of course, most, most I've run into New Orleanian yats and like old Italians. <laughs> That's when it's like, what is your, of course, they're all like, what does your mother think? Yes. Yeah. So. It's like, oh yeah, my mom's proud of everything I do. So, she's, you know. Yeah, my family's proud now, but it took a little, my dad, my dad and my dad's side were pretty supportive pretty quickly. Um, but my mom's side, I worked with a few of them at that solar company, and for for a little bit, everybody was. I was getting like, "You're stupid. You're an idiot. Why are you doing this?" Not in a hateful way, wow. just like a like, I guess in a, a lovingly scornful way of like concerned for you as if you're wasting time. Sure. Yeah. But you know, there's a point where like that job, you know, and hopefully the people I work with don't hear this, but like, Different. I could do that job in ten hours a week. Yeah, yeah. But it made me sit there for 40 hours and not give me anything else. Oh, yeah. So a lot of it was like, I guess I'll watch YouTube videos. Yeah. What do I, what do, I do? I'll watch a tutorial about how to better edit videos or like copywriting or... I mean, I, I use the time to better myself. <clears throat> Sometimes, most of the times for the benefit of what I was doing and also the comedy stuff, but... Most people don't, though. Like, you're right. right. I think most jobs... <laughs> Are like ten hours worth of work, and then forty hours you got to fill of attendance. Yet again, and another part of the American Dream Manual. Where it's like here's the number of hours everyone tells us we're supposed to work, so you got to do that. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if you're only accomplishing like ten percent of what you could do. Like that's all we need you to do. So just do it in that situation. Mm-hmm. And I think too, sometimes it's because like you were probably just good and worked hard and did your job. Right. A lot of times, I used to work at places where it was like my coworker couldn't get it done in the 40 hours. And you were like, and not because they were a jerk or slacking off, but just like their ability to accomplish the task was not there. Right. And I was like, okay, uh, I guess that's why they have to dumb it down for everybody. Like mm-hmm. we all have to take it super mm-hmm. slow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I also think sometimes, especially from our point of view as like content creators is it's like, Hey, let's not mess with that system. The 30 hours they're not working, they're watching our videos. Yeah, so sure. they're listening yeah. to our podcasts. Like, <laughs> yep. let them do it. Like, you know, like, that's fine with me. Hey, if you want to get paid to listen to everybody's art, that's awesome. Do yeah. it. Why not? Be oh. a part of it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like, honestly, going to the bathroom on the clock was always one of my favorite things. You oh, know? like, like every clock time, is Yeah, every time I have to get paid to poop, <laughs> the poop is marvelous. Woo, boy. <laughs> Like, it became, like, a, it, it was, like, a ritualistic pattern. Like, I would go, like, when I worked in a restaurant, I would go, and I would set up my section, and I would do all this stuff, and then I would always have about 15 minutes to poop, and whether or not I had to beforehand, 
Like my body just was like, all right, it's time to get paid and poop. And, and you know, know what? Just sit down. Sometimes you just gotta go sit on that toilet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just like, just, I'm gonna get paid to just sit in the bathroom yeah. for a few minutes. Yeah, like for real. I'm, I, I just, I don't even have to fart right now, but I'm gonna sit here. I'm okay? gonna sit here and enjoy my ten minutes of yeah. paid bathroom time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know what's funny too? Uh, I think another thing that came with it. Uh, I got promised a lot when I started at that place, so like my work ethic was very high. And I was there for three years, and I'd always like the list of broken promises, but also like, cool, I worked extremely hard. Oh, I'm only gonna work really hard for 30 hours. <clears throat> 20, 10, 5. Oh, cool, I'm putting on my two weeks notice, so I get, get the hell out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that sometimes um, that's what happens. People get like sort of browbeat out of like they come in all fresh faced and hopeful, and then it turns out that there isn't a meritocracy and no one cares if you do your work and your manager is pretty much just on Facebook all day. Uh, which brings me back to I was thinking about this thing is that we were talking about earlier like trying to find a reason why like negativity and I think that a lot of people have that point of view like because I was thinking when you guys brought up the negativity thing like oh well I always try to figure out what's nice about a person even if they're a total jerk I'll like search and search Mm -hmm. for their one thing especially too when you're teaching I like teaching level one improv right Mm -hmm. because they don't know what's happening and they don't have any preconceived notions about it and so they're not like walking in and I try my best to find their sweet spot and then pull the creativity from there. But there have been a lot of like people who, in the real world, it's like we would never be friends. Right. Um, but I think a lot of the people, you know, they spend all this time, the 30 hours they're not working on social media and like, you know, Facebook and Twitter and, and Reddit. And these oh, are all yeah, very Reddit. negative mm-hmm. places sure. where people are just like, let me tell you why I don't like this thing. And you're like, could we have a thread about why we like stuff? Yeah. You know? I agree. And I also wonder for, is there a point where, are we starting to try to find things we don't like about each other because there's no, like, we are like, we're shoved, like we're shoving the positive, like we're shoving our info in so many people's faces. That's not, I mean, cause I still remember the world of like, Oh, here's a new person that I have to get to know. Not, I met a person in a friend circle. And then when I went home, I looked at their Facebook and now I know everything about them. Yeah. yeah. Right. So it's yeah. like, is part of that mystery of getting to know someone also why our sense of finding things to be annoyed with is, are so heightened nowadays? Yeah. I think across the board in general with just personal interactions, right? Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's one of those things. Like, you have to – and I would always say this in the restaurant business. It was like, this isn't that hard. So, like, why, why is everybody so angry considering, like, the amount of effort put to, uh, like – financial gain is Mm -hmm. perfect for like I mean for like me who doesn't want to be a laborer really it's like it's unfair but we're all still mad for some reason you know and it's like I always I like it's hard to gauge what real strife is in this sort of like especially like in Austin you know where like everybody's doing just fine for the most part you know like it's even it's even kind of decent to be homeless in Austin (laughs) because like the weather is great yeah yeah yeah. and like sleeping outside is pretty fine most of the time uh, i'm sure someone argue against that but you know i mean yeah. 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 i think a few would yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like there are groups in charge of fighting against that but yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. no but you know that's <laughs> they're just looking for negativity <laughs> right right <laughs> but, yeah, we gotta find it that's just part of our brain always find the negativity yeah uh but, but yeah no, that's just kind of part of the human condition i think is just to like no matter what you, like being happy all the time seems weird you know yeah. I like being weird in that way. Yeah. I prefer, I want people to go, uh, the, the aesthetic I'm going for is weird gal who's a little too happy. Like, I want people to go, what the hell is she so happy about? Like, right. even when I'm having a bad day, I'm not going to tell you. You know what I mean? It'll be like, what's up? How's it going? Like, mm-hmm. even being here the past couple days, yesterday I was, like, effusively excited to talk to every person I talked to. And a couple of people were like, what? Why are you? What are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, hey, man, I haven't been here in, like, a year. I'm excited. Yeah. Like, want to see everybody. Like, let's hang out and be friends. Yeah, yeah. why not? Like, what's yeah. the point? I think that for sure I learned to uh, – because I tell, I tell Chris and Tammy this a lot. And a lot of people around the theater, but – I'm a completely different person with like my anger levels and like interacting with people individually around here because of improv and all that Mm -hmm. Uh, and and improv and sketch and performing and uh, for sure I think I have my moments where if you see me 
you could be like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to avoid Nikki for a little while because he's looking a little mad about something. Yeah. Um, sure, but you have a right. You have the right to be, sure. have all the emotions. Especially, yeah. too, because you're working. You're not just creating theater. You're creating theater and then facilitating a bunch of other theater people, which is difficult because, mm-hmm. you know, they're less organized than, say, these office people who have all this time. Right. Um, but I think lately, too... I've been trying to have a similar thing because I've been, I've gotten feedback of like, sometimes you're a little too intimidating. It's like, all right, cool. I will try to be more engaging and, and, and I guess sweet, <laughs> but also the same thing of like, well, let's do it. Let's, 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 let's let that be the weird thing that if you're like, oh, Nikki's being real nice all the time. Now let's deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's like, I know people, there are probably people I would listen to this and be like, he's not nice all the time. Why do you say that? Um, <laughs> you know, something I want to work on. Yeah, Yeah, but I mean, I I don't think people have to be nice all the time. I just, in my mind, uh, for me, it's not about like outwardly being nice all the time. It's about like grasping at even the worst things that happen and trying to find where the positive is. Sure. And I feel like improv has definitely led me to that because uh, especially when I'm teaching improv, I'm all like, they're going to say everything that you didn't expect them to say. Mm -hmm. And you literally have to take whatever's happening in this moment and keep talking. And, you know, you may have walked in thinking you were in an office scene where you're going to talk to your boss about something, but then all of a sudden you're an elephant and you're discussing why grapes are not delicious. Like, it, it, I you don't know. Roll. You got to roll it. Let's, yeah. find, let's yeah. find that positive and keep yes ending each other. Yeah, because if you start doing like a weird negative improv scene, nobody's watching that. They're all like, boo, what's going Even on? Even your scene partners are like, I'm going to try to edit this so we don't have to watch this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what's the uh, what's the big thing? Uh, we got a, a couple minutes left. What's the like big project you're working on? What's the exciting thing that's in your head right now? The creative uh, excitement that you're working on? Any projects? Sure. So I think to start, it's um, like figuring out how to better use overall creative time for myself. Because I think when you get and, and you know this, and I want to make sure you know this to a degree of like when you immerse yourself so much in, especially a community, it's like, am I putting, am I not giving enough time to the creative thing I want to do? Right? Yeah, yeah. So like the past couple of months I've been doing that and also in conjunction, like kind of researching like what kind of weird fun things are, are, are silly to create. And I'm actually working on putting together a let's play channel. I don't know if you got like on YouTube with like play video games and comedy. Yeah, yeah. Right? Oh. Um, but with, you know, because I think if you watch a lot of them now, it's a lot of just like individuals playing games and doing voiceovers and mm-hmm. reactions if they're scared or they think a thing is funny. But like trying to figure out how to build a world in that realm instead of just like turning on a video game, playing it and putting it on a microphone. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like I've been doing a lot of that lately and uh, trying to figure out how to make that work and then also also learning that sometimes you just got to do it. So like right now after Hell Yes Fest, it's like the like do or die moan. Like I, I've kind of tried to figure out a world for this as much as I can. So it's like, let's just do the project. Cause I think a lot, of, I get caught up in a lot of that, especially with observing people doing their own projects and they, and their holdups of like not doing the thing all the way because they thought this thing. So I think my new mantra lately is like, just do a thing. So like I'm trying to find new weird creative ways to create I um, mean, the Let's Play thing is one of them. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. It's very silly right now. No, that's It's great. kind of like a fun passion project more than anything. Like, if it works, great. If not, it's a fun thing that can chalk up to, like, I found about 10 performers at the theater who were fun to do this thing with, and we did it for 20 episodes, and now it's over. Yeah. Yeah, no, I like I like agreeing to something way before I'm prepared to do it. Sure. Just so, like, just so, like, that deadline's there, and it's mm-hmm. just like, well, I got to jump out of the plane on that day. So, like, you know, it's like... So, I get my mind right, you know. It's like I probably wouldn't push myself if I didn't already like if I didn't just kind of sign up for something I wasn't ready for. And then right. you get ready. You just like whether or not you are, you go. And mm-hmm. it's, I mean, if you fail, you learn. And but so a lot of the times it's just fun, you know. Like you, right. you, all of that anxiety washes away once you just commit to it. You know, you just yeah. get in. And you know, silly, I'm very good with deadlines except giving them to myself. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, it's terrible, you know? Same. I'm all about, like, when I'm working with people, like, let's set some deadlines, let's set some benchmarks. <laughs> you know, yeah. buzzword in, so. Yeah! Um, but when, I, when it comes to myself, I'm just trying, like, I have reminders, like, when I'm typing notes, I, like, give myself a few things before I, like, 
start typing up the projects. Like one of them is like, when I go back to reviews, like make sure you put deadlines.